Okay, so today we're talking about variety selection in tomato. This is what a farmer needs to look for when they're choosing a variety that they want to grow. One thing a farmer needs to look, look at before they actually go into tomato farming is the resources that they have. What kind of capital do you have when, to grow this tomato? We have on, in the market there's determinant, there's semi-determinant and there's indeterminate varieties. Our indeterminate varieties are Sitco, Alhambra and Candela. The difference is with determinant varieties, they will grow and you'll do two harvests and then you won't be able to harvest from there. So they don't grow as long as indeterminant varieties. Indeterminant varieties can keep growing as long as you manage them well. If you manage them well, you can harvest for six months. If they are in the greenhouse, you can even be harvesting for a year. As long as they are healthy and they are growing well disease and disease free. Another thing to look at when you're, when you're considering what tomato you want to plant is the market. What market are you targeting? Are you, are you growing it for the local market? Are you growing it for restaurants or the hospitality industry that might want a bigger tomato? Are you growing it for processing? Because the processing tomato is different. It's more fleshy and it's smaller, so it's different. So you need to consider all those things when you're choosing what tomato you want to actually plant. Another point is, is the location to the market. If your market is further away or is, is, is quite a distance, you need to choose a variety that has got, that has got a longer shelf life so that it doesn't go off or soft or rot while it's being transported to the intended market where it's going. So now we're going to management of the tomato crop. For you to have a nice harvest, you need to manage your tomato properly. You need to follow certain things for, it, for you to have that nice bumper harvest at the end of the day and make good money from it. So firstly, it all starts with the seedling that you're going to plant. You need a healthy seedling. You need a healthy, disease-free and vigorous seedling. When you start with a seedling that's healthy and disease-free, you are assured that the beginning of that crop is already is already good it's already strong if you've got a diseased seedling that you're starting with already it's, it's been put back it's stunted a bit because all that energy that's meant to growing is now going to fighting that disease that the seedling has the next thing we're going to look at is your spacing what spacing are you looking at when you're growing these tomatoes with our varieties which are the indeterminate varieties we look at about 18,000 to 22,000 plants per hectare. So these can range between 20 to 30 centimeters between the plants and 1.5 uh, meters between the rows. Some farmers go for wider rows that even are two meters or wider because they've got tractors that they use for management for spraying. So they need the tractors to pass through the rows when they're spraying. So all that determines what kind of spacing that you are going to use. We'll look at the trellising. When your tomato, tomato is a viney crop, it needs to be trellised. You need to tie it up, you need to support it so that it's not lagging on the floor, it's not lying on the floor. If your tomato plant is on the floor, that's where your disease starts to come in. And once the disease is in, already your factory for having a nice yield or a high yield is already lowered. So you need to make sure all your branches are tied properly and nothing is lying on the floor. Pruning is another thing. You need to remove all suckers that are unproductive because they're just eating your fertilizer. So that all that fertilizer that you're putting is going to the productive branches and not to any branches that are not being used. Make sure your tomato canopy at the bottom is clear. There is airflow that's going in the canopy. This also prevents diseases because there is airflow and it's not creating that environment that is needed for, for diseases to develop. The next thing is weeds. Weeds also are something that will eat into your fertilizer. So you need to make sure your fields are clean and there are no weeds that are in the field. They, are, they can eat through your fertilizer, they can eat through your, they can also take up water that is meant for your crop. We also look at irrigation. Irrigation is very key when it comes to tomatoes. Tomatoes is made of water. The fruit is made of water, so it needs to have enough water at certain times when it's growing. When it's at seedling stage, you need to know how much water you're going to be giving it. When it's at fruiting, you need to know how much water it needs as well. Or the amount of water are different according to the stages that the tomato is at. Drip irrigation is the best irrigation system when it comes to, to, to watering tomatoes. It does not waste water, it does not uh, produce splashes 
from the ground, because splashes from the ground that go onto your leaves can introduce diseases onto your crop. And there you can control your water with drip. You can know that at seedling stage I'm giving it one litre of water. When it's starting to flower, I'm giving it two. When it's fruity, I'm giving it three litres of water per plant. So that's, that's, the, that's the advantage of using drip um, irrigation. Fertilisation. There's different th aspects when it comes to fertilisation. At different stages of the tomato crop, you need different types of fertiliser. We know that in a crop you've got a vegetative stage, you've got a, a, a flowering stage and a fruiting stage. So at all these stages, there's different types of fertilisers that are needed. So you need to get a fertilizer rep, one to check your soils to make sure that they're not acidic, because if you have acidic soils and you put fertilizer, the crop will not take it up anyway. So you need to make sure your, your soils are the right pH, and then you need to have a program, a fertilization program, so that you're giving the crop the right fertilizer at the right time when it's needed. Crop protection is another big thing. Tomato is, can, does get attacked by diseases and you need to have a program in place. Talk to your chemical rep, talk to your seed core rep, let them give you a chemical program that you can follow on a weekly basis. When it comes to the rainy season, you might even need to do two sprays. Do not wait to see the disease in the field. If you see the disease in the field, it is too late, then the damage has already begun to be done on your yield. So you need to prevent the disease from getting into your crop. So you have to do preventative sprays and that's by following a program.